Welcome back to another episode of Cat Shorts. Here as we take a look at big ideas of the Christian faith in small packages, walking through the faith with Martin Luther and his small catechism. So uh, today I've got my um, winter coat on and uh, my snow shovel because we're talking about the Lord's Prayer. So um, buckle up. In fact, you might as well get your Martin Luther Reformation hat or whatever 16th century reformers hat you can find. Let's have some conversation. We've been walking through um, the part of the Lord's Prayer, the middle part that begins, um, Your kingdom come, God, we're praying, Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And our older brother in the faith, Martin Luther, asked the question wisely, What does it mean to pray for God's will to be done? And his answer comes back, importantly, that it's not that our praying makes God's will happen. This is like quintessential Tinkerbell principle stuff here, right? We've said in the last couple of episodes that God is not Tinkerbell from the Peter Pan story. And so there's no amount of clapping we have to do. We're believing hard enough that we'll make God's will happen or even make our prayers happen. Prayer is not magical thinking. That's how Tinkerbell operates in the stories, in the fairy tales, but that isn't how things work for us as people who are calling on God in prayer. When we pray, it's not that a hard enough amount of praying or fierce enough amount of praying makes God's will happen. In fact, our older brother in the faith, Martin Luther, says God's will is going to get done one way or the other by the end of things. The question is whether God works through us or God has to work in spite of us. Now, the amazing thing about the God we meet in the scriptures is that God, who is faithful and good and merciful and gracious, is willing to do whatever it takes, even if it means doing things the hard way, being patient with us, suffering with us, even going to a cross where necessary, in order to complete God's good will for all of creation. But... The question is, if we want to be a part of what God's up to, how can we be on the same wavelength with God, or are we working opposed to what God is up to in the world? That's why I got my snow shovel out. I was thinking about back when I was a kid, and uh, we'd have a heavy enough snow that my father would be out uh, shoveling the driveway. Sometimes it was with a good old-fashioned snow shovel, sometimes it was with a, a snow blower, and of course me with my kid snow shovel too. I'd want to be helping, you know, the way kids help. And I see it in my kids too, when we get a heavy snow and they want to be helpers as well. Sometimes, whether it's them now or me when I was a kid, they get their little shovels, they start digging into the snow and dumping it right back on the driveway, exactly where I've cleared. And they're convinced they're being helpful. We want to help you, Dad. We want to help you. I can remember those words being on my lips too. I want to help you, Dad. I'm going to uh, help shovel the driveway just like you are. But I, I didn't have a clue about what that meant, where I should actually be shoveling shoveling what I should be doing until someone like my dad would do for me, or now I do for my kids, and would say, here's where I'm clearing things away. The goal is to clear the driveway. We're not taking it from the grass and putting it on the driveway. We're taking it from the driveway and clearing it away to the edges of the lawn, that kind of thing. And then it became clear to me. My dad was going to outpace me shoveling the driveway, even if I was dumping snow back on the driveway. No matter what, eventually, he was going to get the driveway cleared. But the question was whether I was going to be a helpful part of what he was up to, whether I was going to be shoveling in the right direction and making it easier for him, or whether my dad would have to work in spite of me. And the same thing plays out now, too, when I'm the dad with a snow shovel and my kids are wanting to be helpful, too. Eventually, I'll get it done with or without their help, and even if they are actively working against me, putting more snow on the places I've just cleared. But they want to be a part of what I'm doing. They want to be a part of it, and they, they want to be useful and helpful when they ask me, Daddy, can I help shovel the driveway? So the question then becomes, how can I get them to be a part of the work I'm up to so that I don't have to work in spite of them, but they can be a part of the good thing that I'm doing? And we can all be happy. Oh, we all cleared the driveway together. We got to be a part of this good thing. That's what it is to pray for God's will to be done, Luther says. It's not that if ten people get together, God's will will happen. Oh, but if only nine did, God's will won't be victorious and evil wins the day. By the end of the story of all creation, God's going to get done what God wants to get done. God is going to bring all of creation to life through Jesus Christ. That's what God's goal and vision is for all the universe. It doesn't depend on enough of us praying hard enough to make it happen. But the question becomes... For we who have the best of intentions, but sometimes our good intentions end up piling more snow right back in the spaces that God just cleared. 
How can we learn to be on the same wavelength with God so that what we do is in line with what God wants done in the world? Lots of people have done all sorts of things convinced they were doing God's will. Sometimes we're not too far off the mark and sometimes we are completely opposed to what God is up to in the world. For Christians, an important keystone is how well our actions, our words, our thoughts are in line with Jesus, the Jesus who lays down his life at the cross for us. He's our touchstone for what the will of God looks like in the world. But in the meantime, as people who pray, your will be done, God, the same way it's done in heaven, let it be done on earth, we're asking God, let me be a part of your good work, clearing the snow off the driveway and redeeming all of creation. Let my work be a part of what you're up to so you don't have to work in spite of me. But know this, even on the days we totally get it wrong and blow it, that doesn't stop God. God's determination is, one way or another, even in spite of us if necessary, <laughs> to be at work for good and for life in all creation. That's what God's big picture will is. The question day by day by day is how can you and I be a part of it and start, you know, shuffling in the right direction. So join us next time for more here on Cat Shorts as we keep working our way through the Lord's Prayer.